my lovely YouTubers, welcome to my safe environment, my safe corner, my safe space. My name is Onela Sikobelana. Thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes, for the comments, for sharing. And if this is your first time popping by then, welcome to my channel. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button together with the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any other new video i do post and you are glued to my channel and you're glued to the safe space to the safe corner to the safe environment today i want to talk about a god who remembers because he surely is a god who remembers i have seen in my life uh remembering me in situations where i have thought he has forgotten in situations where i thought he would not remember me situations that i thought were permanent situations that i thought they will not change at all but he remembered me we'll be reading on the book of first samuel uh, the chapter is one and the verse is 19 so let's just quickly check it out early the next morning they arose and worshiped before the lord and then went back to their home at ramah Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In this scripture, uh, this is a scripture, it's one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible of a woman named Hannah. Hannah had a longing for years. She could not conceive. And Hannah was a wife to Elkanah. There were two wives to Elkanah, Hannah and Penina. And Penina had lots of children and she would constantly poke Hannah because Hannah could not have children. But one thing I love about Hannah's husband is that she loved Hannah irregardlessly. But we're not talking about husbands and love and all of that now. Um, she loved, uh, he loved Hannah so much that he did not have a problem with Hannah not having children, but it used to bother Hannah, the fact that she could not have children. And she went and she went to the temple day in, day out, crying to God to have children. She would go to the temple every day, every week, every month, every year, crying because she wanted to have a child. She wanted to have a child for her husband, but she could not have a child. Hannah's story reminds me so much of myself. When I was growing up, um, I did my matric and in South Africa, you know that you must have matric in order for you to pursue any qualification, any diploma, any degree. So you must first complete your matric and then you have that certificate that you are able to apply with to go and apply and get your diploma or your, or your degree. So in my case, I... Uh, at school, I was a deputy head girl. Let's begin there. So I was a deputy head girl and I was focused and I did not pass my matric, which was number one shame, number one disgrace. How can a whole deputy head girl not pass her matric? But it happened. I did not pass my matric. My parents were shocked. Everyone who knew me was shocked because it was so unexpected. But I did not pass. I did not appear in the newspaper like any other kid. So that meant I had to go rewrite my matrix. My matric. So I rewrote my matric and I rewrote with other children who did not make it as well. And they all received their matric certificates after uh, rewriting and passing. And I passed and I did not receive my matric certificate. And it still did not make sense. I went there day after day, week after week, month after month year after year until it was eight years and i did still not receive my matric certificate until it was eight years i applied in university i could not get through because i did not have a matric certificate uh, i fortunately was able to get through in a college and i did my pr diploma there and when it was time for me to graduate i could not graduate because i did not have a matric certificate Fine, uh, life went on and I would continue going to the Department of Education to my former high school trying to get this matric certificate, but I would be sent back and forth and still not get it. And it was eight years and still I did not get it. And, um, I, and, and I applied for this job at this company that I will not mention and it was one of the dream jobs. It was one of those jobs if as a young person you are in, you are hired that at that company then you are safe for life i passed my interview they chose me and i had to submit my matrix certificate and i ended up not getting the job because i did not have my matrix certificate and this reminds me so much of hannah because i'm thinking now of how many times was hannah disqualified when she actually qualified this is something that i went through year after year and 
when people around me, same applies to Anna, I'm thinking in the community, you know that pressure when you are married and you are not getting children. People are starting to look at you. When are you going to have children? Why are you not having children? And this is the same pressure I received that when, why is she not going to school? Why isn't she graduating like other kids? Why isn't she working like other kids? Why isn't she? Why isn't she? Why isn't she? And this is the same pressure she would get as well. Why isn't she getting children? Why isn't she mothering anyone? Maybe she cannot get children. Maybe this, maybe that. A lot of maybes. And those are the same maybes that you experienced, that I experienced, and that you are experiencing as well today. And those are the same maybes that make you not love yourself, that make you feel shamed, that make you feel that you're not moving in your life, that make you feel that you do not qualify when you actually do qualify. And I remember when I got my metric certificate because eventually after eight years, God remembered me the same way God remembered Hannah because she had been going to the temple so many times and even the preacher had mistakenly thought that Hannah was drunk. She came to the temple drunk and she told, he told her that, when are you going to stop drinking this wine? And Hannah had to say, no, it's not wine that I've been drinking. I am just so uh, heavy burdened. My heart is so heavy because I've got this longing. And this is the same thing that we experience today, that I experienced, that people thought that I do not want to do anything with my life. And little did they know that I am going back and forth to God, asking for this one thing, this one metric certificate, which I feel that it would open so many doors because it was the only hold that led to me not doing anything, anything with my life. So God finally remembered El, uh, Hannah because we hear that the same day that she had this conversation with the, pre with the preacher, not preacher, priest Eli. <sighs> so priest Eli said to her after she had told him that she's not drunk, she's just got a, a heavy heart, she's longing to have a child. And she, he said to her, go in peace, the Lord shall surely remember you. I to say to you today that go in peace, the Lord shall surely remember you. The same way he remembered Hannah is the same way he remembered me is the same way he will remember you. It's not that Hannah did not qualify to be a mother. She had a womb. She qualified to be a mother. She had each and everything a woman that has children or that has a child has. And that meant to me, that meant she qualified. I wrote my exam like any other child. I did each and everything like any other child did for them to appear in the paper, for them to pass, but I did not make it. And that did not mean I don't qualify to make it in life. That does not mean, or it did not mean that I will not be anything in my life. That did not mean Hannah will not be a mother. The fact that God kept saying to her in response to her prayers, wait, 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 it did not mean that she will not have a child. The waiting does not mean you will not have a child. The delay does not mean you will not make it in your life. I know today that there's someone I'm speaking to that is having the same delay I have in my life. The delay that makes you feel that you are not meant for education. You are not meant for marriage. You are not meant to have a good job. You are not meant for that house. You are not meant for that child. You are not meant for that car. You are not meant for anything good. But I want you to know that God will remember you. You qualify to be a mother. You qualify to be a graduate. You qualify for that job. You qualify for whatever longing that you have in your heart right now. Just wait and see God respond to your crying of years, your crying of weeks, your crying of months and days. Wait and see him remember you. He will surely remember you. He remembers, he remembers, he remembers. When I received my matrix certificate, eventually I thought I was dreaming. But I remembered that he had said to me, when the time is right, he will make it happen. But little did I know that it will take so long. And little did I know that when I get this metric certificate, it will open other doors. It will open doors that I did not even think will be opened for me. And it, it is so amazing when all these things happen. When you, God remembers you, he remembers you, he causes a stare, he causes a show off. A show off that people, when they look at you, they start to say, why, is, why are things so galloping in her life? Why are things happening in this manner in her life? And only you and you only understand that 
the way they are happening in is because I had waited and waited in the Lord that, and God has remembered me. So I want you to know that he shall surely remember you. He will remember you. The fact that he's saying wait, it does not mean you will not get it. Because after God remembered Hannah, we never heard a thing about Penina in the Bible. But all we kept hearing about was Hannah's child, the child that was delayed. The child was mistakenly to, to, to not be Hannah's child. Because when people keep saying these things, it is mistaken that you will not have them. People thought she will not have children because of the delay. People thought she cannot have children because of the delay. People thought that I will not be a graduate because of, of, of the delays. People thought that I, that I will amount to nothing because of the delay in my life. But I want you to know that the delay is not there to harm you, but the delay is there to teach you something. Find what that delay is teaching you and run with it because when God remembers it, you, when God remembers your longing, when God hears you, your, your cries, when he hears your prayers, when he responds, your message will come out of what you have been learning throughout all this time that you have been waiting. So know that God will remember you. I don't know what you are longing for, but I know that you have a longing and he will remember you. He will remember your longing. He will remember you. He will cause a show off. He will cause a stare and you will know that he lives and you will know that he has seen you through. He's been seeing you through all this time that you are crying and asking from him. Just remain in him and know that he is a God who remembers. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it blesses you. I hope that you don't forget to subscribe to my channel, to comment, to like, and share this video. I love you so much, and I will see you on my next video. Go in peace. The Lord shall surely remember you.